Greetings from Southeast Asia. I'm Bevan. I'm Matthias. And I'm Judy. And we are the, the Kinder, Kinder family. family. Thank you so much for your prayers and support for many years. It was, we were invited to re refresh our memory on our connection with you guys. And I, I remember that I started attending Cumberland Valley Church, uh, now the Dillsburg campus, during my college years. That was 1982. <laughs> And then the leadership there had the courage to release me to be a worship leader. He's Very old. courageous. And then uh, back in 91, Pastor Ray prayed me out and sent me out to go do my discipleship training school and join Youth of the Mission. And then you guys continued to stand with me as I waited for the gift of Judy, praise God, and to stand with us as we waited for the gift of Matthias. Thank you, Yo. Jesus. And then also continued to uh Pray for us and support us as we launched our whole family out to Southeast Asia seven years ago. So, wow, 30 years of your faithful support. We're so grateful. Could not have done this without you. Recently, we had the pleasure to run a youth camp for the Chinese and foreigners. Um, I got to see two salvations, and we had tons of fun, tons of games, tons of worship. And it's really just a symbol of how God is moving throughout Thailand here. The whole week was designed to share the good news that's in the, the Gospels, and it culminated on day four where there was a response time to say, you know, how are we to respond uh, to the message that was presented? And so many kids came up and responded, uh, probably a dozen, and it was just moving to see so many of the teenagers just weeping in the presence of the Lord. But what struck me the most was when everybody was done and everyone had walked out, uh, folks were invited to stay if they wanted to keep praying. And there was one young Chinese guy who was just sitting there. And I said, oh, I wonder if he's okay. So I went up to him and said, do you want me to pray for you? And he nodded yes and obviously had tears in his eyes. And I said, well, what can I pray for you about? And he said, well, my heart not good. I said, oh, do you want to pray for your not good heart? So we prayed and asked Jesus to help him with that. Then he said, my, my, my relationship with my mom and dad is not good. I said, so we can pray for that too. So we prayed for his relationship with his parents. And then he said, I, I don't have Jesus in my heart. And by then, you know, he's just broken in the presence of the Lord. And we said, do you, well, do you want to pray to have Jesus in your heart? And he goes, yes. So we got to pray and it was just so moving to see the Holy Spirit move in someone's life. Um, that we got to lead to the Lord. So, yay! Yay, go God! Yes, I wanted to also share a story. One of the things we're involved with here in Southeast Asia is coming alongside what God is doing to raise up new missionaries from new sending nations. And part of my contribution to that is uh, training missionary leaders, missions mobilizers, if you will, how to inspire their whole community to pray, give, and go, and find their role in uh, Jesus' Great Commission. And after, during one of the trainings, this amazing leader in North India said yes to going on a very hard, dangerous journey to a remote place to run a youth camp. And they had 130 young people who are from Catholic and Hindu backgrounds. And during that time, she was able to share what she had learned and, and seven young people said, yes, we want to be missionaries. But also during that time, a, a young person came asking for prayer, really struggling. And when Grace started to pray for them, she felt that she should ask if there was any amulets, which is like a, a charm to ward off the spirits. And yes, the, the, the girl had a black amulet. And when she took it off, actually Grace felt pain in her arm. And she renounced that pain, prayed for this girl, and she had a dramatic deliverance. And then the next day it became clear that she was free and was going to be following Jesus from that point on. So it's kind of great to see both mobilization and evangelism happening in that context and to be a part of that through training. As the Ginder family, we're involved in leadership development here in Asia because, uh, again, God is doing so much. There's so many amazing leaders being raised up, and we really need to continue to invest in new and existing leaders to develop their capacity to steward all the fruit and all the things that God is doing. So we're part of the Asian Leaders Learning Community. I'm also serving as the Global 
elder for mobilization within the part of Youth of the Mission that's focused on church planting and disciple making movements. And we have the privilege of having catalyzed 21 disciple making movements around the world. And I'm continuing to do training in mobilization. And also here locally, there are many Chinese that have moved into this city and we're partnering with the YWAMers in the city to try and reach out to them. And uh, then Judy's also involved in uh, leadership for the homeschool co-op that's happening in this city. So those are some of the things we're involved with. Thank you for asking for prayer points. Yes, continue to pray that our local ministry outreach will be fruitful and that our global uh, leadership development and training opportunities would be really fruitful as well and that God would bring the right people and that they would actually apply everything they learn and that we as a family would be able to thrive in this season. Thank you.